Oh, Ethan Klein, I'm here to virtually deliver you the attention that you ordered. <laughs> I was gonna get a haircut today, you know, but I'm setting some time aside to respond to this because Mina woke me up and she was like, Edwin, you're not gonna like H3's new podcast. I'm like, oh boy, he just can't stop talking about Michael Jackson. And it's funny because the way it was brought up is that one of his guests, Common Etiquette, had said, do you guys think he did it? Referring to Jeffrey Epstein. Let's talk about ago. Epstein. There's been updates. Oh boy. 60 Minutes did a really interesting story on... Uh, you guys think he did it? And for some reason, H3H3 is like, you know what? I, I tend to be a tough critic. Let me just play the clip. I want to get a shirt that just says, I don't think he did it. Epstein, <laughs> <laughs> Epstein's face. Do you know, can I say something? I'm a critic of Michael Jackson. I think he's a filthy pedo. And I get a lot of shit when I say that Michael Jackson's a... Um, uh, filthy, uh, predatory pedophile. Right, so everyone's talking about Jeffrey Epstein because Ethan introduced the topic and all of a sudden Ethan's like, you know, you know what, can I just say something? I, 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 people are mean to me because I have a really strong opinion about Michael Jackson and it's very negative and he's got a lot of fans and my opinion is wrong. <laughs> Why do you get shit? Like, I... because people think he's innocent. And they've proven it? <laughs> Well, no, you think it's a fair question. Why do you get shit? And I say it's a fair question because you know people are allowed to have their opinions of Michael Jackson or whoever and express them online. That that's totally fair. However, Ethan's response is what's a bit dishonest or or maybe just delusional because he says that he gets shit because people think Michael Jackson is innocent. Now that could be in part true. However, the reason why I give him shit, at least if you, that's what you consider my video to be, is because he's lying. What I what I like to talk about here is undeniable, un, undisputed facts, okay? He's giving misinformation. He, he presents his opinions as facts, and I believe that's I incredibly irresponsible, and especially right here that he's lying. He's like, well, because people think he's innocent. Sure, that's one thing, but also, don't be spreading misinformation as if it's true. Because people think he's innocent. And they've proven it? <laughs> Well, no. Then commentary etiquette asks Ethan, and they've proven it. <laughs> Ethan says no, <laughs> or or do you mean no? I don't want to hear or see it because, bro, I went down point by point on how wrong you are, Ethan. <laughs> so funny, man. <laughs> Each side believes that there's plenty of proof. But right. what I will say proof about Michael Jackson, argument, it's kind of tough. You know, I gotta give Hila some points for this because in the Michael Jackson podcast that they did, she kind of went along with everything that Ethan was saying. And now she's actually making a pretty valid point that each side believes that there's plenty of proof on both sides, which is pretty true. However, when you start to take the time to research, and, and it is a lot to look through, you know, but there is plenty of available research to look through. Um, you start to realize that the innocent side has a lot more proof than the guilty side. What I will say about Michael Jackson is that if he wasn't a famous pop star, people... Like, there's as much evidence against him as there is against Epstein. Ethan really just said that there's as much evidence against Michael Jackson as there is against Jeffrey Epstein. Okay, let's process this real quick. In 2005, police in Palm Beach, Florida began investigating Epstein after a parent complained that he had sexually abused their 14-year-old daughter. Epstein pleaded guilty and was convicted in 2008 by a Florida state court of procuring an underage girl for prostitution and soliciting a prostitute. I'm not a sexual predator, I'm an offender, he told the newspaper at the time. It's the difference between a murderer and a person who steals a bagel, bruh. <laughs> he served almost 13 months in custody but with extensive work release. He was convicted of only these two crimes as part of a plea deal, but federal officials had in fact identified 36 girls, some as young as 14 years old, whom Epstein had sexually abused. Epstein was arrested again on July 6, 2019 on federal charges for the sex trafficking of minors in Florida and New York. The key thing to keep in mind in this case is the FBI investigation on Jeffrey Epstein, what they found on him, all these girls, then the whole sex trafficking ring. All right, now let's see what the FBI has to say about Michael Jackson. Between 1993 and 1994, and separately between 2004 and 2005, Jackson was investigated by California law enforcement agencies for possible child molestation. He was acquitted of all such charges. Now bear in mind, the FBI's assistance included raiding Michael Jackson's home twice and taking away all his computers, all his magazines, and taking a bunch of stuff. And guess what? They found absolutely nothing. It's, it's so amazing to me that people think that just because Michael Jackson was a famous singer, they think that the FBI is going to give Michael Jackson a pass because he's Michael Jackson. Like, do people really think that the entire Federal Bureau of Investigation are just, as a collective, the biggest fans of Michael Jackson? Like, how, how ridiculous does that sound? I, I mean, am I crazy here? Really? Really? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh boy. Just like Jeffrey Epstein had his day in court, as did Michael Jackson. The only difference is Michael Jackson was found innocent on all counts. Not to mention, the prosecutor wanted Michael Jackson to be guilty so bad that he switched up the laws so they could bring in evidence from the 1993 allegation. And guess what? Pfft, still innocent. But Michael Jackson, he gets that doubt because he wrote Thriller. I used to really like H3H3 when he used to do videos on his original channel. And then he started doing podcasts, which I, I did really like quite a few of them. But then he started kind of saying really out there opinions. So I, I, it just wasn't for me. And then I heard the Michael Jackson one. And other people, when I did my video on the Michael Jackson one, people were telling me that eh, that's not the only opinion where he just pre pre uh, presents it as a fact. And right here, that's another example that he presents as a fact. But Michael Jackson, he gets that doubt because he wrote Thriller. Michael Jackson did not write Thriller. A simple Google search will tell you that it was written by Rod Temperton and produced by Quincy Jones. Now you could argue, oh come on Edwin, you, you know what Ethan meant. Maybe he didn't mean write it, but he meant Michael Jackson released the song Thriller. You know, the song everybody likes to play, especially around Halloween. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. But then you keep watching and you hear Ethan say this. Even though Thriller is just about I seeing mean, a kid's butthole for the first time. With... Right, so something about the song Thriller led Ethan to believe that the lyrics were about seeing a child's butthole for the first time? Are, are you kidding me? We gotta start putting a question mark to some of Ethan's comments because what the hell? Kind of the for same the first thing time. with R. Kelly. Everyone just, uh, for some reason now everyone's ready to like... Yeah. Just right. hate R. Kelly. I'm not exactly sure where Hila was going with the whole for some reason everyone's ready to hate R. Kelly now. I mean... Yeah, it's become more public knowledge that he married Aaliyah illegally when she was underage and that he literally has videotapes of his wrongdoings to underage girls. I see no connection to the Michael Jackson thing because you're saying for some reason everyone's ready to get on the hate train. Is it some subtle shade towards Ethan because he's for some reason now on the hate train towards Michael Jackson and he wasn't before? Do you think uh, Michael Jackson would be in jail right now if he hadn't taken the, the sleepy pills? No. Well, see, I can't take this guy too seriously because he's obviously uninformed and he's not pretending to be anything more, you know? He's just there to throw some jokes. Sleepy pills? Bro, Michael Jackson's death was classified as a homicide because his doctor overly did the sleepy pills, which is not a sleepy pill, but, you know. I'm a Michael Jackson fan of his music. Sure. Not a Who fan of his pedophilia, obviously. I like how he says that he's a Michael Jackson fan uh, of his music, you know, because then... It kind of gives me a clue as to why he feels the need to bring it up when the conversation was about Jeffrey Epstein originally. You know, I, I feel like this might give us insight as to why he felt that way because he, he wants to listen to Michael Jackson's music, but for some reason, every time he does, he hears Thriller and he thinks the song is suddenly about a child's butthole, which I, I would say it, it's a, it's an Ethan problem because, again, I don't, I don't know how he sees that. <laughs> Did you guys watch the Leaving Neverland documentary? So we started it, um, and I think... the. Aaron was the one that uh, kind of made us turn it off. She was like, I already know how this goes. I don't want to. So we never finished it. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Shout out to Aaron. She's great. That's Jack's wife. And I'm cool with Jack, too, which is why I'm glad <laughs> I'm relieved that he hasn't said anything out of bounds, which I, not that I would be worried. You know, I he's always been really good at not overstepping or, or saying things that come off pretentious or uninformed, you know, and this isn't totally related. But I remember another situation that was way more awkward. I mean, I don't know if this was awkward for him, but that one time on the H3 podcast where Ethan just couldn't stop saying the N-word. Well, Ethan said, you could feel the discomfort in Jack's face. Yeah, it's pretty dark. It, you know, I think I think that was but I part of it. I loved it. I could only yeah. stand listening to dudes talking about Michael Jackson staring at their boy buttholes for like 30 <laughs> seconds before I have to turn it off that's your max yeah i feel 30 like... good seconds i gotta say the fact that ethan said he loved leaving neverland and then comment etiquette followed it up by saying I i'm sorry i can't take too much of hearing grown men talking about you know all that stuff that's the perfect follow-up and it's like i said this guy comment etiquette he probably was just invited to have a good time and talk about whatever it's not like he was prepped we're gonna talk about this and that you know so he's just there to make jokes no i really don't know. i thought it was very compelling <laughs> I and i enjoyed it a really lot good. but uh we, I, I do want to so, give it another shot what were we talking about um um, We're Epstein. About so Epstein. Yeah. So here, I was watching on sixty minutes. <laughs> I have to laugh because you know he was seeking validation from his peers and he didn't get it. So I was like, "All right, guys, let's let's go to the thing I actually plan on talking about." Epstein. Okay. <laughs> I do want so, to give it another shot. What were we talking Jack says he wants to give Leaving Neverland another chance, and I'm not here to dissuade anybody from watching that movie. On the contrary, if you want to watch it, go ahead, but I only encourage you guys to look at the ample evidence that contradicts that movie. Last year was incredibly hard. It was uh, it was a nightmare. If they would have come to us, we would have told them the whole history behind the two people, 
and I don't even think it would have aired, but they didn't care to do that. They didn't care for the truth. This is the first time really our family has kind of responded back. We usually, you know, my grandma's very biblical, and so she's always about turn the other cheek, you know, don't, just ignore it. But this, with social media, if you ignore it, people think it's true. I found it odd that Dan Reed, the director of the film Leaving Neverland, never bothered to reach out to Michael Jackson's family, any of them, you know, or, or like offer any sort of secondary perspective. It made the film really feel like propaganda. And furthermore, he didn't even mention the fact that both James Safechuck and Wade Robson are suing the Michael Jackson estate for hundreds of millions of dollars. But anyways, I'm not here to debate or, or convince anyone of anything. I, I just want you guys to, to research a little bit deeper than what the media perpetuates against Michael Jackson because it's really rare to see anything positive written about Michael Jackson. Even when there's neutral news articles about Michael Jackson, for example, this one about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West buying their daughter Michael Jackson's Jack for Christmas for some reason the media always feels the need to mention leaving Neverland and, and say negative things about Michael Jackson for example saying that the documentary had a lasting impact on Michael's legacy saying that stations took him out of their rotation I actually replied to the author of the article and I asked them why they felt the need to bring up leaving Neverland movie and lying about the movie ruining Michael Jackson's perception you know I said Michael Jackson's streams have actually gone up since and it's not at all relevant with Kim getting her daughter the jacket so it was weird to read that part. I was just giving an honest feedback from me reading that whole article and guess what happened? I got blocked by Robin. The media seems to have no problem perpetuating exclusively negative things about Michael Jackson and then when you question them, oh, you get blocked. It would be nice if Ethan wasn't so much like the media and would report deeper than just a headline and actually research things, but that's hoping for too much, huh? I would love for Ethan to invite Taj Jackson, Michael Jackson's nephew, who's been defending him pretty actively on social media, onto his show, you know? It, make, make it fair. And I say this because I can guarantee you that within the next six months, Ethan will be bringing up Michael Jackson at some point in his podcast. I, I can put money on that. Five dollars. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I'm gonna do a little rant on Aaron Carter next because what's going on with this homeboy? See you guys soon.